Jeremy Pena just finished a postseason to remember, culminating in a World Series championship and World Series MVP award. In this video, we'll take a look back at what could have been for many teams as we go back to the 2018 MLB draft and take a look at every player that went before Jeremy Pena at pick 102. Please hit that like to support the video and subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming content. Let's get into it. As I mentioned, 101 players were picked before Jeremy Pena. Let's go through them and let's start with the top five. And we've got at number five, Jonathan India, NL Rookie of the Year in 2021. Missed a ton of time in 2022, but the Reds have something special here. In at number four, it was Nick Madrigal. He debuted in 2020. Excellent contact skills. But a career OPS plus of just 93 in injuries have led to a tough start for Madrigal. Pick number three was Alec Bohm. After a disappointing 2021, he bounced back in 2022 and put together a really nice season for the Phillies. In at number two was Joey Bart. He debuted in 2020, had his ups and downs, only two games in 21, but saw a lot of action in 2022, appearing in 97 games. And it was a good step forward. No stats really jump off the page, but it was something to build on. And the number one pick that year was Casey Mize. Also debuted in 2020, struggled, showed some promise in 2021 with a 371 ERA, but in 22 needed Tommy John surgery. Still only 25, still a lot of promise. Out of the top five, four of them are still with their original teams. Now, also of note, drafted ninth in this draft was Kyler Murray. All the drama at the time was would he play baseball? Would he play football? Everybody believed that he would go play football. But still, Oakland used their number nine pick on Kyler Murray. Let's move on and let's talk about some of the players that were drafted that have the star power. We talked about Jonathan India, the 21 Rookie of the Year. Something special going on there in Cincy. We also have Logan Gilbert, debuted in 2021 and in 2022, 13-6 with a 3.20 ERA, a 1.18 whip, and 174 strikeouts in his sophomore season. Good stuff coming from Gilbert. And then at 31, we had Shane McClanahan. Cy Young candidate in 22 was great. Only not going to get it at this point. He has not gotten it and probably won't get it. Lose it to Verlander because McClanahan missed some time and Justin Verlander was that good. But McClanahan is clearly the runner-up for the AL Cy Young as of recording in the American League. So we have some stars that have come out of this draft. How about some players that are trending in the right direction? Let's go again. We talked about Alec Bohm, disappointed in 21, but bounced back in 22. We also have Brady Singer, was drafted 18th by KC. And after up and down seasons in 20 and 21, things came together in 2022 thanks to better control. Got him to a 10-5 record and a 3-2-3 ERA. Drafted 24th was Nico Horner. This 2022 season, finally he got through a season without any major injuries and showed what we all expected, that he's a good baseball player on both sides, offensively and defensively. And we also have, way back at 90, Cal Raleigh. Big moments down the stretch in 2022. And during the season... Posted a 774 OPS, good for an OPS plus of 122, with 27 home runs. This was his first full season after just 47 games the year prior. Let's talk about some of these players that have had some tough starts. So we're going to start accumulating names. So we're going to be going away from the headshots. We have a really, listen, we talked about Casey Mize. Uh, had some promise in 2021, but that injury really slows him down that Tommy John surgery obviously we expect him to be back and be stronger than ever but a tough start to have to have surgery just as things seem to be clicking for you Joey Bart again ups and downs in 2020 only two games in 2021 the stats in 2022 were not that impressive again it's something to build upon but it has been kind of a tough start Madrigal, we talked about his situation with an OPS plus of just 93 and some injuries. That's tough. We also have Jared Kelnick. He was selected sixth. It has not been good. 147 games with a 168 batting average and a 338 slugging. That's not good. We have more. 
In this draft, we also had at 7th, Ryan Weathers. After 94 innings in 2021 with San Diego, he pitched to a 6.73 ERA at AAA in 2022. We've also got Trevor Larnick. Missed time due to injury. Over 420 Major League at-bats to this point. Despite those injuries, just a 226 batting average. And Seth Beer is here. A 208 average, a 292 slugging with 120 pro at-bats under his belt at this point. And number 33 here, Jackson Kowar. 46 pro innings, an ERA of 10.76. That's bad. Let's keep going. We have three more. Daniel Lynch. 4 and 13 with a 5-1-3 ERA this past year in Kansas City as he's looking to get more time under his belt, get better. He's going to need 2023 to be better in a big way. We also have teammate Chris Bubich who it says 39 there, it should say 40. He was drafted 40. He's a teammate of Coar and Lynch. You see where things have been going for KC. 3 and 13 with a 5-5-8 this past season for Bubich. So KC with Coar Lynch and Bubich They've got some work to do. And Josiah Gray comes in, the 72nd pick this past year, 7-10 with a 5.02 ERA and 28 starts now. Over 41 major league starts under his belt, an ERA of 5.17. Now we had some players make their debut in 2022. Let's go through those. Travis Swaggerty was picked 10th by the Pirates, made his Pittsburgh debut. Jordan Groshans, after being traded from Toronto to the Marlins, got his debut under his belt in 2022. 17 games for Miami. Matthew Libertori, that's number 16 pick, made his debut for the Cardinals. Nolan Gorman made his debut as well, the 19th pick. And number 26, Tristan Cassis, also made his debut. Now, in his debut, Really interesting, just a 197 batting average, but the dude draws walks. 197 batting average, but a ton of walks, putting in on-base percentage over 300, despite having trouble with his hitting. Did hit five home runs as well. The number 29 pick, Bo Naylor, made his debut for Cleveland. Only eight at-bats over five games, but he arrived and he'll get more action next year. Sean Hajili made his 22 debut after moving his way through the system. Got his chance. He's tall. Six foot eleven tall, has a deceptive arm angle. Personally, this is a guy I'm looking forward to watching in 2023. Steel Walker made his debut, 16 plate appearances with the Rangers, one hit, and it was a home run. Simeon Woods Richardson, the number 48 pick, made his debut for the Twins after being traded twice before making his debut from the Mets to the Blue Jays and then the Blue Jays to the Twins. He finally made his debut in the Bigs. And number 63, Alec Thomas made his debut, was the 32nd overall prospect by Baseball America, appeared in 113 games for Arizona, posted a 619 OPS with eight home runs. We also had debuts from number 68, Michael Grove. We had Cody Clemens make his debut. Interesting here, 145 batting average, not good, but he pitched a lot. Seven games where he pitched, got his first strikeout with his father, being Roger Clemens, I think that might be the highlight of the season for Cody Clemens was that strikeout. The number 81 pick, Connor Pilkington, made his debut for Cleveland after being traded from the White Sox to Cleveland for Cesar Hernandez in 2021. Made his debut, started 11 of his 15 appearances and posted a 3.88 ERA. We also had Ford Proctor making his debut after being traded by the Rays to the Giants in August. Giants gave him his debut late in the season. He collected two hits, one of which was a grand slam against the Rockies. And then Taron Vavara made his debut for the Orioles. He was traded from Colorado to Baltimore as a part of the Michael Gibbons trade in 2020. Made his big league debut after showing a nice plate approach at AAA Norfolk with a 324 batting average and 435 on base percentage. Now we've also got four prospects that have not made their debut, but sit on Baseball America's top 100 list. That is Grayson Rodriguez at number 11, Cole Wynn at number 15. Interesting note on Cole Wynn, he really struggled this past season. A 6.51 ERA and a 6.4 walks per nine rate for Cole Wynn. He's got to get his control together. We have Matt McLean, the number 25, and Brennan Davis, the 62nd pick. He is the number 16th overall prospect. Now, there are players that have made their debut and are showing signs of progress. Not quite stars yet, 
But some good baseball coming out of these four. Jake McCarthy at number 39 was drafted, debuted in 2021. And in 2022, he slashed 283, 342, batting and on base with eight home runs and 23 steals in 26 tries. We had Ryan Jeffers, number 59, in his third year of pro ball. And he's establishing himself as one of the better catchers behind the plate. Nick Sandlin from Cleveland debuted in 21, and now after 80 appearances over 21 and 22, he's becoming one of their reliable arms with a 2.55 ERA and a 1.14 whip. And number 84, Owen Miller, was drafted by the Padres, traded to Cleveland as a part of that Mike Clevenger trade. Looks like a good depth piece for Cleveland, slashing 243, 301, and 351 last year, and since his debut, has played every infield position. Now, there are 11 players who played at AAA in 2022. That's the highest level they reached. Bryce Terang, Ryan Rollison, Caden Grenier, Xavier Edwards, Grayson Genesta, Josh Bro, Lucan Baker, Carlos Cortez, Hogan Harris, Connor Kaiser, and Blaine Knight. All reached AAA. Now, Ryan Rollison, I must highlight, reached AAA in 2021 and missed 2022 to injury. Now, there are 20 players that reached double-A, played at double-A at their highest level this last year. Connor Scott, the number 13 overall pick. Jordan Adams, the number 17. JT Ginn, some high upside there with him at this point. Plus, Grant Levine, Griffin Roberts, Parker Meadows, Jamison Hanna, Griffin Conine, Josh Stowers, Tyler Frank, Jeremiah Jackson, Jonathan Bolin, Tim Kate, Will Banfield, Jeremy Ironman, Tanner Dotson, Mitchell Kilkenny, Cole Roderer, Adam Kloppenstein, and Jonathan Ordealis. Next, the players drafted before Pena that had a ball as the highest level that they reached or played at this year. The number 23 pick, Anthony Siegler. Mason Denneberg, the number 27 pick. Plus, Nick Schnell, Lenny Torres, Lion Richardson, Braxton Ashcraft, Osiris Johnson, Owen White, Joe Gray, Nick Decker, Jason Schroeder, Micah Bayo, Grant Little, Paul Rashan, Jake Wong, and Brian Spillane. Also, Tristan Pompey is playing independent baseball. A couple of players still at rookie level, Ethan Hankins and Gunnar Hogland. Gunnar Hogland didn't sign in 18, was drafted again in 2021 by the Blue Jays and then traded to Oakland in the Matt Chapman trade, and he pitched in rookie ball in 2022. Now let's do a close look at the 10 players drafted directly before Jeremy Pena. We start with Ford Proctor, shortstop out of Rice, traded by the Rays to the Giants, as we talked about earlier, hit a grand slam against the Rockies. His highlight from 2022 made his debut in 2022. Next up, the number 93 pick was Aaron Hernandez, a right-handed pitcher to the Angels from Texas A&M. Spent all of 2022 coming out of the pen at double A and posted a disappointing 5.48 ERA. Pick number 94 was Kyle Isbell out of Nevada, Las Vegas. Debuted in 2021 and in limited time looked like a hitter but took a step back in 2022. Now, he is good defensively, but that won't matter if he's out there with an OPS plus of 70 again. The number 95 pick was Mateo Heal of the St. Louis Cardinals from Timber Creek High School. Maybe his claim to fame for now is that he was included in the package of players for Nolan Arenado. In 2022, over 58 games at A and rookie ball, and he posted a 739 OPS with seven home runs. The number 96 pick was Taryn Vavara by the Rockies, shortstop out of Minnesota. We talked about it earlier, traded by the Rockies to the Orioles as part of the Michael Givens deal and made his major league debut in 2022 with the O's. The number 97 pick was Ryder Green by the Yankees, an outfielder out of Carnes High School in Knoxville. Now, it's still early in his career. He's only 22, but this past season, he missed all but six games for the Tampa Yankees due to injury. The number 98 pick was Jimmy Heron by the Cubs, an outfielder from Duke, traded by the Cubs to the Rockies in 2019 for cash. 
Made some nice strides in 2022 while playing at Double A AA and Triple A. Posted an OPS of 814 with 13 home runs. The number 99 pick was Jackson Goddard by the Diamondbacks, a right-handed pitcher from Kansas. Has not been able to get beyond A ball. In 2022, he pitched out of the pen, appearing in 21 games, but control issues continued to plague him with a 6.3 walks per nine rate. The 100th pick was Durbin Feltman by the Red Sox, a right handed pitcher out of Texas Christian, had been rising through the system, pitching well at all levels for the most part. At least until this past season at AAA where he posted a 7.63 ERA out of the bullpen. The 101 pick, the pick before Pena, was Reed Schaller by the Washington Nationals. A right-handed pitcher out of Vanderbilt. In 2022, he pitched a double-A Harrisburg out of the pen, 38 appearances with a 6.33 ERA. And at pick 102 is your World Series champion, your World Series MVP, your ALCS MVP, Jeremy Pena, the future You look at those players drafted before him and you could say it's not even close. Now, we are at pick 102. It's not like this is a first-round pick, but still, some serious regret has to be going on in Washington or Boston or Arizona or Chicago or New York to have been that close to Jeremy Pena, who looks like he's going to be a star in the league. Comment below and let me know what you think, everybody. Washington fans, are you bummed out? One pick away. And of course, if you have not yet, make sure to leave a like. It's the best way to support the channel. Let's me know you are enjoying the content here. And subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming content coming to the channel. That's it for this one. I do appreciate you coming in, spending some time with the channel, and checking this video out. I will add some links to some of my other content for you to check out here. Now, as always, thank you for watching my video.